able to humble yourself and say sorry to your partner, even you know that you are not at fault. This is a very le very good lesson to learn. Actually, if you are planning to be in a relationship or if you are already in a relationship. Um, uh, I'll tell you a story, a true story that happened to me. In the beginning of our relationship, my, my wife is here. She cannot test me. <laughs> During the early part of our relationship, it would take days before we reconcile. Uh, it's 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 a uh, what you call this? It's a difficult lesson to learn, especially if both of you are a bit uh, how do I say? Yeah. But you know, if you just put your relationship to God, things will change. Things will change. Things will You just have to humble yourself. Ask for grace from God. That right. you'll be able to bring down your pride. Even if it's hard. Even if it's hard. But, but you know, talking to experience, I was able to do it. Only because of the grace of God. So if you're planning to be in a relationship, or if you are already in a relationship, you should always pray for grace. Because forgiving is not easy. You know, it's against human uh, grain of humanity. It is against the grain of humanity, sorry. Very difficult. Even, even saying sorry to your parents, or even saying sorry to your friends, all the more saying sorry to your partner only by the grace of God. That's the fourth lesson. Number five, they say dating isn't meant to be done in a bubble. What does it mean? One of the implications of being made for relationship is that much of Christian life is done in community. Okay. Hence, the Bible studies, small groups, the prayer fellowships is very important in a relationship. <clears throat> um, uh, in, in, in our society, there's so much isolation. You know, if you're in a relationship, you want to be isolated from others. Amen, man? Amen. 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 That is human nature. <laughs> you want to isolate yourself from, from uh, the others. Amen. As with every other aspect of life, so with your dating life. It is meant to be shared. It is meant to be shared. If the church is a family, then it's called it's it's not called a fellowship for nothing. We need our brothers and sisters. Like if you go to church on a Friday, you see brothers and sisters. Peers who will relate to your struggles and joys, but also older members who can impart wisdom. All eager to help you discern where your relationship is and where it should be. You should not isolate yourself. You should learn from others. You should seek advice from others. You should get your examples from others. So it is not, uh, sorry, it is not uh, uh, right to isolate yourself from others if you are in a relationship. Okay? So what's number one? You will not be there. You will not be rank number one because the Lord should be number one. Number two, you, we are all meant to be in a relationship. Number three, relationship is more than feelings. Number four, and then number five. Dating is not done in a bubble. Okay. To answer the question in Facebook, am I in the right relationship? I'll give you five, uh, I'll give you signs in dating relationship. Uh, 
I, I, I want to call it red flags. You know, when, when, you, when you have red flags, what does it mean? It's a warning. It's a warning. So I'll give you flags. I'll give you several red flags today. Am I answering the question, am I in the right relationship? Okay. Am I dating the right guy? Okay, number one. Red flag. If you are more interested in your relationship with Christ than your date. I'm sorry, than your date is. Do you get it? Amen. <laughs> okay, brother Paul. But I said was, if you are more interested in your relationship with Christ compared to your partner. You, 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 you know that your faith is strong. You know that you have put your trust in God. You know that you are serving the Lord. You know that you are faithful with the Lord. And then comparing yourself with your partner is not faithful. He's not serving. He's struggling with his faith. He's struggling with his church service. So this should be a red flag. Red flag. Should be a red flag. <clears throat> Ask yourself this question: How strong is his relationship with Jesus Christ? Is he interested in growing spiritually? How passionate is he about reading God's word, prayer, and fellowship with other believers? Is he servant-hearted? Are you spiritually stronger than he is? Your spiritual maturity may result in frustration and leadership struggles if he is not as strong as you in his relationship with God. For sure you will struggle. Either you encourage him, or he will bring you down. Second, does he care about your spiritual growth? Amen? Very important question. Ultimately, your spiritual condition is up to you and you alone. However, in Ephesians, Paul compares a husband's role toward his wife with that of Christ's role toward his bride, the church. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Gave himself for her, and he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor. Very important. What is the, red, the first red flag? If you are more interested in your relationship with Christ compared to Number two, is your date too dependent on you? Clingy? Is he too dependent? Marriage is con sorry. Marriage is a covenantal bond between a man and a woman where there is dependence. Dependence. Only up to a certain extent. Number two. Number two. Is your date too dependent on you? Is a second. Too dependent. If you are dating a man who expects you to be everything to him and always make him happy, you both are in for a harsh awakening after your honeymoon. Totoo yan, no? Pag honeymoon, okay. Pero pag itas ng honeymoon, ma-realize mo. Oops. Okay. Always remember that we are both sinners. We are all sinners, amen? Yes. Both are sinners. You will sin against each other. Amen? You will sin against each other because we are, we are both sinners. While you do not want that to happen, it is a reality. You will disappoint each other. A lot of disappointments along the way. It is not on purpose. Why would you do it on purpose? It is most of the time it's not on purpose. But you will always will. You will not meet his or her demands or needs. 
know, this will create disappointments. <clears throat> if if you are expecting your partner to meet all your needs, then it is close to idolatry. Okay? Because nobody can meet all your needs. Amen? Why? Because only God can satisfy us. Amen. Amen. Only God can satisfy you. Even your wife or your husband cannot satisfy you fully. Probably you'll be satisfied up to a certain extent. But only God can fully satisfy you. So don't be too dependent. Okay. You can be dependent up to a certain extent. But our dependence should be only 100% with God. Amen? Amen? Only with God. How many red flags are ready? Two? Two. Third, if your date won't keep his hands off you, ladies, okay, in the first place, his hand should not be on your hands. There's a time for everything. Amen, ladies? There's a time for everything. Do not fall for the statement, I just care about you so much. I love you so much. Prove your love to me. Okay? The truth is that he cares more about himself than you. Talking to ladies. Okay? <laughs> It is wrong for a man to treat a woman as if he has free he has free reign with her body before marriage. Men, you don't have reign over the body of your partner until you have signed that document that you are already married. Amen. Respect right. your partner. Right. right. Amen. 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 Giving yourself to the man is not a proof that you love them. It is like abusing yourself. Okay? I'm sorry I have to say this. I'm really sorry I have to say this, but this is the truth. This is the truth. So if your date won't keep his hands off you, then it's a red flag. It might be something else. Okay? Number four. This is very important. If your date has an anger problem. Okay? How does your date cope when things do not go as planned? Does he spew his anger all over to everyone, including yourself? Okay? This is a serious red flag. Okay? Let us uh, look at Proverbs 22, 24, 25. Proverbs 22. Okay. 24, 25. It says here, Make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man, thou shall not go. Lest thou lead his ways, ah, uh, sorry, lest Thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Okay? Make no friendship with a man even to angry people. If you are not made to make friendship with, an angry, with angry people, why would you covenant yourself to someone who fits that description? So, if your date has an anger problem, is a red flag. Number five. Fifth flag. If he won't grow. Remember last week, we mentioned that we have to pray for your partner to grow. Okay? You wouldn't want to have a husband or a wife who does not grow, amen? I mean, grow spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Do 
you <laughs> agree that we all have our do we do we have that we we all have our weaknesses? Yeah. Amen. We are all human. We all have our weaknesses. We have our share of masama uh, ugali. How do you say that in English? Bad attitude. Not bad attitude, but negative attitude. Negative ways, probably. Negative character. Negative ways. Ang hirap no, mayroon kaya English. I'm trying as much as possible to talk in English so that I won't, uh, I won't uh, be uh, as impolite in it. But there are words that I really can express fully in English. Um, we all have our weaknesses. We all have our our negative negative traits. Negative traits. However, if you are spirit filled. And only by the grace of God that you are spirit-filled, you will be able to uh, overcome all these negative traits that you have. However, you won't be able to overcome these negative traits if you are not growing in the Lord. That's why if you are in a relationship, give yourself time to be in that relationship before you finally say, yes, I will marry you. Give each other enough time to grow in the Lord so that by the time you get married, you are already matured in your relationship with the Lord. Therefore, your relationship with your wife or your husband will also be matured. Amen? Amen? However, if your partner refuses to grow, then it's a red flag. Amen? As I mentioned earlier, love is not just about feeling. It is a choice. It is a decision. Okay? So don't ever marry a person if you don't see growth in him. Otherwise, you are in for a surprise, surprise, surprise. Okay? And lastly, this is already the sixth, I think. It's a red flag if your date is not teachable. It is a red flag if your date is not teachable. Walang amen dun, eh, no? A man who is unwilling to take counsel shows that he is prideful instead of humble. You will always have problems if your partner is not teachable. Somebody who does not please it. Okay? A man who seeks counsel is a man who desires to be wise. Proverbs 8.11 Proverbs 8.11 says, For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Wisdom is to be desired. But if your partner refuses to learn, he is refusing wisdom. Amen? He is refusing wisdom. Very important. This is the last. If your partner is not teachable, it's a red flag. Better think before saying yes. Or, for guys, better think before you propose. Because, as Solomon said, wisdom are far better than rubies. Amen? Amen. What are the red flags again? Let's review. What's number one? Your promise. If your if your relationship is if your relationship with Christ is better than your partner, or if your focus is your relationship with Christ, so does your partner. That's number one. Number two. If your partner is too dependent on you. Number three. 
if your date cannot keep his hands hands off you. That's a red flag. Number four, partner has an anger problem. Number five, if he won't grow spiritually. Number six, if he's not teachable. So these are red flags. Okay? <laughs> However, if, if your partner has these traits, it's not the end of the world, amen? amen? You can still pray for him. That the Lord will work in his heart. That the Lord will change him. If he is really the will of the Lord for him. Amen? It is very important to know that the person is really the will of God for you. But as I mentioned, these are red flags. But you can still pray for it. There's nothing impossible with God. Amen? Amen. Well, see, Anybody can change if he's willing to change. Only by the grace of God. Okay? So, the question is, are you in the right relationship? Well, I, believe, I believe that question, please. We have no idea. I believe that question. But I really hope you learned something. You know, we've been discussing love, courtship, and marriage for the past how many weeks? Three weeks. This is already the third week, and I hope you are learning something. You know, each week as we are, we are uh, discussing love, courtship, and marriage. In the beginning, we we uh, the first week we talked about Rebecca and Isaac, their love story. Last week we talked about courtship. This week we talk about relationships. Next week we will talk about marriage. Oh. marriage. Is there anything that you'd like to share or you'd like to ask? My wife is here. <laughs> anything that you'd like to share? We still have a few more minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> come down, come down, children. <laughs> I want to share about the uh, bangit kanina yung anger. It mentioned about anger. If you are in this uh, situation, do not discuss on what things just has happened. Straight to the point. Pray. Both of you together. Other one is silent listening, and you're the one is praying. So that's all I can contribute. Thank you. <laughs> The greatest weapon is prayer. That's what Brother Fernandez. Anger management. To battle anger is to pray. Anything else? Anything? No. Anything that you'd like to add? This is a good time to discuss for at least you know. Paul. 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 Would you like to share your learnings for the past three weeks? anything to say? Yes. Valentine's is a pagan practice. No, no. It's a pagan practice. It although, is. Although, although there are people who would have love banquet or couples banquet on the month of February, but it doesn't mean that they're celebrating Valentine's. Right. For me, Valentine's should be every day. I was discussing it with somebody the, the other day and his point of view that uh, because it's no longer 
how do I say it? Because it's already uh, accepted that, uh, how do I say it? It's already being practiced. And uh, the practice is no longer paganistic in a way. So it's all right to celebrate it. So I have a different view. Because if it's pagan, if it's a pagan practice, you just camouflage it to make it a not so pagan practice. And then the society will accept it. But God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Nothing has changed. The standards of God is the same before, the same now, will be the same tomorrow. So if it's a pagan practice, it's a pagan practice, period. No ifs, no buts. That's my view on Valentine's Day. Especially if you're using Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day. It's like saying, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, celebrating St. Valentine's Day, which is really a pagan practice. I hope I clarified something. I mean, you never hear Pastor John talking about Valentine's Day in my five years here in, in BBC. But it doesn't mean that that we should practice it. You can express your love during the month of February, no problem with that. You can also express your love in the month of January, March, April, May, June, July, or September. Because you should love your partner every day. Amen. 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 Remember, love is a choice. Being with someone is a choice. It's a choice. Because a lot of possibilities when you separate yourself. 
a lot, really a lot of possibilities. One, you cannot learn from others. Number two, you cannot be an example to others. Right. Number three, you might be tempted to do something that is not right in the eyes of you. So a lot of a lot of possibilities. There are more advantages when you are with people right. rather than being nice with people. Yes. So after uh, you know, long years of relation, tell us, I mean, uh, I mean uh, imagine for us eight years. It could be that God has a better plan for you. Sometimes it will uh, throw money. Yeah, probably God has a better plan. Throw money if your faith is not that uh, mature enough or strong enough. I really think God that, uh, that uh, you know I grow as a Christian. You know, a lot of you are single right now. It's it's good if you really pray for somebody that is mature. Right. That is that will have the same level of maturity as you are. Amen. This is very important to have uh, the same level of maturity in, in terms of your faith with God. Because it will not work if the other one is lagging behind. It will not work. So you should be at pace with each other. Yeah, with your with your service to the Lord, with your faith, uh, with your maturity. You know it's very important your last point yung teachable heart. Napaka-importante na makita nyo yan sa simula pa lang. Before the relationship even progress, you should you should be able to discern if you're, if somebody who is courting you is teachable or not. Okay? Remember? Remember? Love is not just about feelings. Okay. Anything else? But this is a good discussion. At least we're learning from each other. Amen. I'm also learning from you. When do you know? When do you know? When do you know? When to answer? When to answer? Yes. Babalik pa rin tayo sa understanding God's way. According to the Word of God, you have sought counsel. Number three, circumstances. Circumstances are loving it. Number four, you have peace sealed by the Holy Spirit. You know? So if, if you have satisfied all those four criteria, then it's time for you to say yes. And if you don't have red flags anymore, you know, if you have red flags, meaning you don't have peace. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we ignore the red flags. The Holy Spirit is telling you something, but you ignore, you are ignoring it. Why? Because you are basing your decisions on your emotions. Right. Okay. Amen. Okay. A lot of lessons here, actually. A lot of lessons. We we just discussed it for an hour, but I think we have covered so many topics and lessons Amen. that can guide you. Choose the right guy or choose the right woman for you. Si Brazilo. <laughs> Sige, ko, ano, 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 ano. Right. I'm not saying that our marriage is perfect. We're still learning. We're sharing this for you to learn from us. But what is important that you know that the Holy Spirit is working in your relationship. You will see the you will see the progress. You will see the the what you call this the improvement. Once the work can be some now, it will be a mahal na mahal mo siya, hindi yung love kasi nawawala yung feeling. Ang kontante na yung friendship, kung paano kayo isa akong taloy, nung iiwan kasi sa pag, kung magkanda na kayo yung iiwan. Kasi maraming instances na pag nating yun sa older age, yung love hindi na katindi, wala yun sa feelings. But yung friendship na binoon yun, Amen. 
Okay? No more? But it's a good, it's a good discussion. Right. I thank God that we, uh, we are able to discuss this. I would just like to share because uh, Brother Ronald and I, as a permission cake pastor, is, is talking to the Panginoon uh, land, the Satuabas, and Pastor said, well, actually, you also need that time so that you can discuss private things together, but do it in a public place. And still, fell of time to fellowship. You need to total that forever. Of course, you need time. You need time to talk to each other alone. That's why last week we mentioned that if you are in a room, open the door. You don't. Yeah. You get what I mean. You go to a public place so that you don't do foolish things. And of course, it's needed for you to communicate, for you to go out, to know each other. It's important. Apart from telephone calls, yeah. So, but, but you know what I'm saying is that you don't isolate yourself from the world because this, uh, especially for young adults. They tend to isolate themselves from the world, as if the world in the world is it's only the two of them. You get what I mean? That they don't they don't listen to advices anymore. They don't listen to what people others say anymore. What is important to them important to them is what they think and what they feel. You know, people would tell them to do things, but they would not be there. They are isolating themselves. That's why it's there. It's, that's why it's mentioned earlier that if you are in a relationship, it should not be in a bubble. You should you should communicate with others. You should fellowship with others so that people will learn from you and you will learn from them. Amen. That is very important. You can you really cannot isolate yourself and also get wisdom from older people. You know, you get wisdom from older people. Don't ask advice from your peers. Because sometimes you have the same thinking. Ask somebody who has already experienced things in life. Then you will be able to get wisdom from them. Okay? I, I really wish we have more time. We don't. Uh, but, but my prayer is that you know all the things that we have heard the past three weeks would really linger in your heart so that by the time that you decide to get married or to be in a relationship, you'll be guided. You'll be guided. Uh, always remember this thing. You know, I'm not sharing this because because I just want to share it. I'm sharing this because you want. I want you to learn from me. I want you to be in a good relationship when you decide to have a relationship. By guided by the Bible, Amen. guided by the Word. Of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Can we ask, uh, Brother Gary, can you close us in prayer?